Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher and today I'm going to be demonstrating cast on loops and cast on tendrils. This is a variation of my bouillon tendrils that I love doing and it's just using the cast on bouillon stitch instead. I'll show you how I like doing it with a couple of different threads so you can see what it looks like. Don't forget to hit that like button, click on the subscribe button. When the bell pops up, click on that for email notifications and I love hearing from you. So leave me comments in the comment section. Grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's stitch the cast on, bouillon, knot, tendril, and loop together. Using silk and pearl, this is turquoise honey, a bouillon knot needle. So I'm gonna come into a cast on bouillon tendril. So I'm gonna come into my center and I'm gonna go all the way out to outside this, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my cast on. That's 30. Use my pliers to pull that through. And that is my cast on tendril. I'm going to do a couple of them right here of different lengths. I'll do another one right here, maybe coming out a little farther. Okay. I'll go ahead and do my cast ons. And do one more. Coming out here. Kind of cool. I'm going to do a cast on loop with my number eight weight eleganza. This is EZM50. Cast on loop is just very similar to, it's just like the, the bouillon loop. So I'm going to take my stitch here, come up. I'm going to go just right next to where that thread emerges. And then I'm going to do my cast ons. So that's 30. And I'm going to pull it in and it gives me that little loop and I can come in to the next one. I want to give myself enough space for the for the loop to exist without overlapping with the other one. So there it is in the number eight weight eleganza. Cast on loop with a this one, the Oriental linen. I've got it on my bouillon knot needle. I'm going to do a couple of loops right here on this petal. It's 22. Let's see how that looks. It's a heavier weight, so it's certainly going to 
be different than if I was using a number eight weight Eligonza. It's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and anchor this, and then I'll come up for my next one right here. One more here, and I'll switch threads and do a different thread. It's 26. So there it is in the Oriental linen. I'm going to do a tendril, a cast on tendril using this Londonberry linen thread. I'm using my bullion knot needle, and I'm going to do one that comes out from the center of this indigo vase. I think I'm going to have it going up towards the ribbon. So here, start my cast ons. It's 40. Just like with the bouillon tendril, I don't want this stitch in the, that's running to pull. I'm going to anchor it here. And then I'll do, I think, a couple more. There's another cast on tendril. I'm using my Aurora, again with my bouillon knot needle. Now the big issue with the bouillon knot needle is that it's an elongated eye. So sometimes it's hard to thread something like the Aurora, which has several strands. There it goes. Loop right here, a little cast on loop on the side of the ribbon. So there's the one, and I'll do one more here. And that's with the Aurora. This one is with seagrass. So it's just a little different. Cast on tendril right here with my seagrass. And there it is in the seagrass. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this gave you some ideas about the cast on bouillon knot and how you can adapt it to other in other ways, making it into a loop, making it into a long tendril, changing it. This all this is actually looks like a cross between a drizzle and a bouillon knot, which it is actually. Don't forget to hit that like button, click on the bell that pops up when you hit subscribe uh, for email notifications. Talk to me. I love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out the description section where I'll leave links um, to all the different threads that I use in this video. Until next time, here's to stitching together.